Hey guys, we are back with Chris Gorski on Eldrazi Tron versus Patrick Williams on Obzon Company. They are going to game number two. Tron is up game. Looks like our players are shuffling up. So talking to the players before we got them into our feature match area, Patrick had basically infinite life. He went up to 20,000 life, but lost to an Ulamog. Milling. Milling him out. Yeah. Yeah, He as he was walking over to the feature match area, he sadly mentioned to me, infinite life doesn't stop Ulamog. <laughs> you, <laughs> it does not. That is correct. Okay, so looking for both players to keep a good seven. Uh, Chris Gorski is shipping it back. Looks like Pat's keeping. Well, hopefully, Mr. Gorski can keep a good six. So while Mr. Gorski is doing that, let's uh, talk about what we got going on this weekend, Ryan. We've got, uh, for those of you who are into 40K, we have a massive 40K event going on this Saturday. Um, for the Magic players, which I imagine most of you are, we do have a Grand Prix trial for uh, Grand Prix Beijing. It is the standard format. Uh, we, are, we are aware that most players probably aren't attending that, that event, but we are just trying to run as many GPTs as possible, give players an, a chance to grind Planeswalker points and also just play in GPTs before they leave stores forever. Um, it is at noon, it has a $10 entry fee, and there are cash prizes. It is regular REL, so deck lists are not required. And that night at 6 o'clock, we will be doing a modern win -a box that is $10. $10 is not our regular entry fee, so if you're in the Morgantown area or close to it, you like to play some modern, come down and take advantage of that uh, low price. All right, so it looks like Mr. Gorski gets to keep. He keeps his card maybe on He's top. considering. I think I see an endless one in his hand. <laughs> and it's on top. And here we go. So there's a fetch by Patrick. Probably going to go straight to a Temple Garden or a... It is going to get a green, white, or black, or That's some combination. The, the Overgrown Tomb was the other one I was trying to think yeah. of the name of, but just slipped off the top of my tongue. Could have been a Shrine of No Gods, but that's not typically what you fetch for on turn one. Mm. Uh, bird or no bird? The High Arc. Brobel. Okay, so Pat's going down to 17. He's going to play a Brobel and kick it back. Scorsese's looking at his hand. Lots of spells. He could just ghost quarter him here. He could do that. Is there, there not a significant number of basics in that list? Oh, no, there's five basics, but I'm just saying it's a, it's a play that could happen. But he's, instead he's going to play Urza's Tower, which seems better. All right, and then into a Tide Hollish Color. Now, does Pat go with the spicy play of, with the trigger on the stack, path my own Tide Hollish Color? Mm, no. Nope. All right. All right, so we got two a ghost quarter and Eldrazi, two ghost quarters and Eldrazi Temple, Matter Shaper, Cos like the Great Distortion, and a and warping, warping whale. whale, which might kill a noble. No, it's power, right? Uh, I believe it is power, power one or less. I believe so. Okay, so yeah, it could kill a noble. All right, so but it will not kill the. So it looks like. Color. Well, it looks like Pat's still trying to decide on what he takes. If uh, he's tight on mana, he might take the Warping Whale. Well, so he's just going to take the the Matter, matter Shaper. Shaper. And it, look at that Noble Hierarch getting in there so frisky. It's going to do one damage because of that Exalted Trigger from the Noble Hierarch. I, if you're not tight on mana, I like taking the Matter Shaper because that's a good. That's your like your only opportunity to one for one with the Matter Shaper. Right. So here's a mine. And that was a mine off the top too. Yeah, so he's just gonna warping whale well, away at the noble. Yep. Which is probably the smart thing here. It preserves his life total a little bit. Yeah. And because uh, he doesn't want to get the tide hollow scholar getting in there for three against you. It also like all of Pat's best plays are court of callings and collected companies, which require you know a lot of mana. Right. All right. So forest. <coughs> Excuse me. And the kitchen finks. Pat's gonna go up to nineteen. We have a tied game here. And it's quickly untied with a basically a four point life swing there. Mm hmm. Can Fink's good. Tail Hill Scully's going to crack in. Mr. Gorsi's falling down at 2 17, and he's going to play a Ghost Quarter as the lane for his turn. Right. So Pat has the other force in his. And during the upkeep, I guess he's going to get rid of the Black Source. Yeah, I think he's just. Chris has had no action this game, and right. he's just looking for something to do. 
Right. Which this may not be relevant. Maybe it is relevant. Uh, but Pat can go find a swamp here if he want if he wants a black. And I think that's what he's going to do because he has double green available in him, available to him in his hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, loving the choice of basics here. These lovely white bordered cards. They're uh, Japanese uh, portal second age. Ooh, that's that's pretty spicy. Yeah, I like them obviously because it's my deck. Right. Uh, so the Pat's gonna draw for his turn and plays Forest. Uh, he's thinking about how he wants to tap here. Another oh, spell sky. Spell sky. Okay. And we need to mark that for the players. Looks like he's gonna go ahead and tag for three or five. Excuse me. Is that a scavenging news? Maybe. Uh, I can't see exactly what that was. Uh, he did tap double green for it. Mm-hmm. So it may have been. I'm gonna go uh, uh, let our players know what their what their that border is. Right. Where the and borders of the Shire. Basically, right at the horse's head. Yeah, the horse's head. The prancing pony is right at the border <laughs> of the Shire. So, Mr. Gorski follows up with a Mattery Shaper here, and lets Mr. Well, lets Mr. Williams untap, and we're gonna go from there. Uh, there was a fetch. From a marsh flats, going to go get something. Not exactly sure what. Uh, perhaps another overground tomb. Oh, he goes and gets the godless shrine. So it looks like he's going to shock himself with the godless shrine. Go down to seventeen. Uh, oh, it was a Malira that was. What was on the borders for us there? The Sylvic mm. Outcast was and banished to the edge of the playmat. And there is the Anafenza, so literally he's just looking for one more piece here. He needs to sacrifice Outlet. Typically Viserys here. Occasionally Cartel Aristocrat. So Mr. Gorski gets a, a map off the Mana Reshaper trigger. The So he can assemble Tron here. Correct. But he can't do much with it because he'll have at most five mana. Right. Which I'm not sure. I mean, he could play a Smasher or a Thought Not Seer, but this we'll is. Get, we'll get those life totals updated real quick. Uh, we have Gorski at 12 and Mr. Williams at 19. Uh, Patrick did go down to 17, but then went back up again to 19 from the Kitchen Finks coming back to the battlefield. It's a ghost quarter for Chris. Looks like he's counting up the damage that he's going to take on his next turn. Either which, that or he's counting to see like what could be courted for. Yes. Currently, he's got Patrick has nine power on the board, so it's a tur- two turn clock. I mean, it looks Pat's not drawing any of his business spells, but he's just he's just going aggro. Right. Aggro. Cycle horizon canopy. Draw a collected company combo. Maybe. Possibly. Nope, just battles. Okay, so in for nine. And no creatures to play, so no bolster triggers. Okay, so Chris is going down to three. It's two, two, four, six, nine. Yep. And with that on the stack, but before damage, he's going to company. Okay. Uh, are there no... Cr- there we are. Okay, so Bird and a Sculler. Uh, bolster Triggers. It's going to put a counter on Tide Hollow Sculler. And the other one on the Bird, because that's where it has to go, right? Yeah, because it's lowest power, right? I think Chris is maybe pointing that out. Yep. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yep, okay. Lowest Toughness, I believe. Okay, well, either way. One on the Bird, and then... He has to put the first one on the Bird. Correct. And then the second one can go where he chooses. Yeah. But he's going to put them both on the bird, which is fine. And he's got to resolve that Tide Hollow Sculler trigger now. It looks like they're just discussing the bolster. The first one had to go on the bird, but that brings the right. bird's puff- toughness up to two, which then he may choose to put the second one on any of the other creatures, I believe. Right. No, no, it'd have... It'd have to go to Malira because she's a 2-1, I think. 
Well, then that case he could have just put the the first one on the Malira. I believe Malira yeah, is a two two. Oh yeah. No, you're right. She is a two two. So he can choose to put it on the Malira. He can put it on the Tide Holder Scholar, the Anafenza, or even the Kitchen Finks. Probably don't want to put it on the Kitchen Finks. No, you don't. Not until it already has a minus one minus one counter. Right. On. Or since it can't get minus one minus one counters, uh, you just don't want to put it on there because that's gonna be your the card that you sacrifice until you can hit your red cap. Right. Does this list play a red cap? Yes. I know some company versions have been taking it out. Yeah, it's the only... Okay. Uh, yeah, some some don't play the red cap. Um, I I have a red cap in there because I just want to play with a red cap. And I'm I'm not sure which which way is better, but it is the only creature that has a convert mana cost higher than three. Right. I know there are there are so, players with strong feelings on this matter. All right, so it looks like we got the bolster settled. Now we should resolve the tide holder color. Yep, and then Chris should fall to two now if he has no other effects. All right. Tide Hollow Scholar. Okay, so Chris is going to reveal... A Kozilek, a... Waste, and... A Sanctum? Sanctum of Ugin. All right, and then damage. We should have Chris falling down to two. Yep. Yep. All right. I'm not sure exactly what Chris needs here. Tron, uh, so he needs... So he's going to go get the last Tron piece. Now he needs to go get find Ugin. Even Ostom doesn't do it because the Kitchen Finks is in play. Right, so he needs to go find Ugin. Well, Ugin doesn't either... Or no, it acts all them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so he's going to have Tron... He's going to be able to have Tron. Now, I don't know if he has Ugin in his list. Uh, but does El I'm, I'm not very familiar with Eldrazi Tron. Not the colorless version, anyways. I'm not. I'm imagining that wasn't an Ugin he drew. From his body language, I would, I would have to agree. Uh, I probably would have windmill slammed it if it was. Yeah, I would have been a total child. <laughs> He's a spear dragon! Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna kill everything. It's gotta be like my least favorite card in this format because it just destroys every deck I play. Get good. <laughs> Get good. Beat Ugin. <laughs> His power rivals Nicol Bolas. But Nicol Bolas still eats it for breakfast. Yeah, probably right. Grixis. It just does. Yeah. <laughs> That's mine now. I'm really excited for the Amonkhet stories. Uh, so I'm also excited to see what the new Nickel Bolas is. If we even get a new Nickel Bolas, I would just be hey, happy with just a cre same Nickel Bolas. Yeah, I, I would be too. I'd be happy either way. All right. So All right. Gonna, looks like we're going to go to game three here. Yeah, so Chris is going to pick it up, and Pat ties it up at 1-1 one, one here between Obzon Company and Eldrazi Tron. If you're just tuning in, Thanks for joining us. I'm Ryan O'Loughlin. Ryan Wolf is with me, and we're broadcasting from Forest and Comics and Gaming here in the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia. I'll take this opportunity to mention our other fine retail locations. We do have a store in Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, downtown. Then we have another store in Clarksburg, West Virginia, in the Meadowbrook Mall in the old uh, Dollar Tree location. Yeah, Dollar Tree. That Dollar Tree had been there for years, and it, it served the community well, but now it's a Four Horsemen, and we're all, we're all happy. They had a strong number of players tonight for their one of their first f and I believe 20 players, yeah. And the store's only been open for a few months, and uh, not a lot of st new stores get 20 people for their f and so that's great. The store's been doing really well. I think a draft is was kind of beneficial for that, so. Yeah. Uh, so as we go into Game 3, uh not exactly. I would say that the Tron deck is very favored because they play Karn, Ugin, Oblivion, Stone. But right. I, I don't know how many of those cards, if any, are in the Eldrazi Tron deck. Right. I, I'm not familiar either. Uh, I think it's just a reality smash type deck. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to smash you in the face with this 5-5 five five that's really difficult to get rid of. I actually have seen this matchup some um, back during Eldrazi Winter. When Joe Lissette was uh, playing Tron a lot, and uh, right. and the biggest non-Tron deck was Obzon Company, but that was that was early last year, so that was a year ago. So I'm not 
Right, so seen in a while. things have changed, obviously, since then. There's no more Eye of Ugin. Yeah, no more Eye of Ugin helps. Uh, Abzan has avoided any possible bans that there could have been. I don't think there was a need for it. There, there were... Uh, there was a, a community of people advocating for Cord getting banned at a, at one point in time, to which I reply, I just I just stopped playing. Uh, yeah, I probably just not play this format anymore if they born banned Cord <laughs> calling. I'm just like I'm done. I mean, so you've been hit by bans pretty hard for some of the decks that you've played in the past. Because I like green. Yeah, I mean, stop playing green. No, never. Uh, so temple into map. Into what if? Excuse me, windswept heath into overgrown tomb. Looks like he's shocking it. It it does probably followed by a bird. Yep, bird is the play. Bird or hierarch? There's four of each, so. Mm, four and three. Four I and think. three. Four and okay. three. Yep. Four bird, three three hierarch. Yep. Blue mana doesn't do a lot. Redirect spells to spell sky and abilities. That's about it. That's it's not really what you're in the market for. No. And plus, those birds uh, that can actually be pretty threatening with all the bolster triggers and the right. the Gavney Township tokens. Just get ridiculously large and then just die to a bird. Yeah. And yeah. also exalted triggers. <laughs> bird gets underneath the bridge. Well, flies over the bridge, I suppose. Yeah. It could fly under the bridge if it wanted. It could. So Pat's going to shock himself down to 15. Going to play Spell Skype. Yep. <laughs> so Blue Man may come into play. And right, here's another bird. All right. So Patrick's developing his mana quite well. Mr. Gorski's going to go ahead and crack that that um, expedition map and going to get probably another Tron piece here. I'm actually not sure that Spell Skype is one of the uh, creatures that I would keep in post board. Because typically the Tron deck doesn't play a lot of spot removal, well, and, and it spell sky doesn't really disrupt them. So what we did see in game in game two though was the warping whale. The warping whale, but I'm not saying that that's really what you want it to do. Yeah, because maybe he plays like two of those. Uh, what what I do like is that it's an O4. Right. So it it blocks. It blocks real well, except for if there's a smash. Yeah. It blocks a Thought Not Seer once, but it, it does block the rest of the creatures that typically that the I mean, it, it deck is, is going to block. It's an okay blocker against Reality Smasher because it, the, the trample doesn't do much at that point. Right. All right, so we have a And there's smasher. a Smasher. Yep. Turn three Reality Smasher is pretty good. And it's going to smash. Yep. So Bringing down five. Pets at ten. And... Yeah. He's already at half his starting life total going into his third, third turn. turn here, yeah. The Reality Smasher is really, really strong. It really is. Oh, he's got another fetch land here, so he's at least going to go to nine. I imagine he's Patrick's going to search up a basic. Right. Uh, I think Pat. I think I saw a flash of a Path to Exile, so he's going to have to two-for-one himself to get rid of this. Worth. <laughs> Worth. Worth. Oh, well. Okay, Renegade Rally, Rally Trigger Revolt, Fetch, down to eight. eight. Path the the smasher, discard whatever was left in his hand. Renegade Rallyer. I've uh, seen this that card in play a couple times recently, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, one of our other players, Brian Huffman, plays it in his Abzen deck as well, and I have to say that card is has exceeded expectations.